Hi everyone and welcome to Film Dirt and also welcome to this prison cell known as the Film Dirt Lounge but this is nowhere near as escape proof as the actual Alcatraz. Was it as secure as they said it was? To find out tonight I decided to watch Escape from Alcatraz from way back in 1979 starring of course Clint Eastwood as Frank Morris the Anglin brothers played by Jack Thibault and Fred Ward with Patrick McGoohan as the Warden. Now, I'm a huge fan of this movie because not only as a movie in itself, but it's based on a thoroughly fascinating story. Anyone that's seen this movie can't fail to put in a little bit of research into the actual true events. Three inmates who somehow crawled out of their cells, up uh, drain pipes to the upper levels of Alcatraz, all without being noticed and seemingly escaped on a self-made inflatable raft. And if this wasn't based on a true story, you'd wonder how far-fetched is this, and what do I believe? Because this sequence of events is absolutely astonishing. So we start this story with Frank Morris being brought in, and uh, it's clear that this is a very high security prison, and it was infamous worldwide, wasn't it, that Alcatraz was completely escape proof and it's the toughest prison and only the toughest criminals are sent there because it's also surrounded by ice cold waters that's full of sharks. <laughs> it's not easy to escape from. But this story takes you step by step almost with each phase of the operation. And I couldn't see a bad performance at all from any member of the cast or supporting cast. Clint Eastwood is absolutely iconic here as he always is and there is a resemblance between him and those photos of Frank Morris isn't there? Fred Ward and Jack Tabot, both as the Anglin brothers are great as well. One of them is a bit more quieter than the other and I hear that was actually true of them in real life as well. I recall hearing that one was a little bit more outspoken and the other was uh, quietly cold. And also there's Larry Hankin as Charlie Butts the fourth member of the team that never actually followed through with the escape. Now his character is based on the real life Alan West. I didn't see why they changed the character name. Probably a little bit of difficulty getting clearance from his estate maybe. But it is definitely the same character to me. All four of them were digging away at the grill at the backs of their cells. And I believe wasn't it West who kind of left his escape to the last moment before actually venturing out of the cell before realising that he either couldn't fit or there was a metal bar in the way and that is just tough luck especially knowing that the other three guys got away whether or not they survived is another story but the build up to that escape is brilliantly played out here I love all the characters uh, there's Wolf as well that Frank Morris encounters a couple of times Patrick McGoohan as Walden is a brilliantly cold character. The person is clearly the one to hate and he's taking certain privileges away and generally making life a lot tougher than it needed to be. He probably enjoys doing it as well. <laughs> he's one of those characters. And in contrast, the guards themselves don't really come across as that evil. I think they're just guys doing a job. They've concentrated the real evil on the, the Warden character. And with his presence in the background, the whole film has a, a really unique atmosphere that you don't see too often. It is really tense from start to finish. And I was completely invested even during the slower scenes, like the ones where Frank Morris is welding two pieces of metal together. That took a really long time and it would be much more abbreviated in current films. But we're there watching him file a coin and then gathering all the fragments and then lighting matches. And it must have taken a good few minutes, but I was quite fascinated watching him do it. To me, it didn't seem like that instrument had much strength to it. I mean, it is two pieces of metal together. I would have probably just kept the metal spoon as it was. However, the concrete material did look quite brittle, didn't it? Now, I gathered those parts of the scenes were done in a studio, I suppose they had to, but the rest of it, or most of the film, was filmed at the actual Alcatraz prison, and they were filming in and around boatloads of tourists coming and going. The fact they were even there at the actual prison just gives another presence to the film. 
So overall, I love this film. There are times though that it did brush over a few things, like how they made the workshop above the cell block, and how they invested all that time making a raft for four guys, using crudely made drills to get through vents, all without not being discovered. What an incredible story. <laughs> it's one of the few that just makes you want to read up on how it all actually happened. So I'm going to give this film four and a half stars. Taking into account some of the aspects here were brushed over. And also some of these events didn't actually happen. But it did come out in 1979, which was only around 10 years after the event. So there wasn't as much information then as we know now. But considering what we've seen released to us... A lot of this film does seem quite close, all brilliantly directed by Don Siegel, who at the time was a, quite a regular collaborator with Clint Eastwood, wasn't he? So I just wanted to finish off by giving a few thoughts on the actual events, because like most of you, I'm sure you've gone down the rabbit hole as much as I did. There's a lot of information out there. And like I said earlier, a lot of it is just so extreme and unbelievable. How they actually managed to accomplish all this without being discovered. Now it's supposed to be a maximum security prison, but they weren't really watched as closely as they should have. When you think of all those processes they had to go through to actually engineer the escape, they had to chisel out of the backs of their cells, make the false uh, cardboard fascia to conceal the hole, make the dummy heads to put in their beds while they're out, Establish the workshop surrounded by uh, blankets to hide themselves, uh, gluing and stitching, life vests and the raft. How did they accomplish all this? So did they make it across the waters to Angel Island? Did they really make it to freedom? I've given it some thought. I think they did. I think all three guys that actually got out of their cells that night they survived the journey to Angel Island. Isn't it approximately just over two miles distance? Now, I'm not belittling that achievement, but people have done that swim in ice water. You hear of people actually completing the English Channel from England to France. I get that it's a really tough swim. <laughs> I get that. But they did have apparently working life vests and an inflatable raft they were sitting in. So even if one or two of those things failed, they still presumably made some distance that they actually made up by swimming. And from what we hear, all three guys were good swimmers. Their stories of the Anglin brothers in particular actually swimming in ice water. And Frank Morris as well was apparently a very good swimmer. So I think it was entirely possible. Now I have seen some theories on how they escaped. There's a few variations, isn't there? There is an interesting one where they didn't actually head straight across to Angel Island. They, once they're in the water, they may have gone round to the the port where apparently at around 11pm uh, there was a boat leaving that was there for a staff changeover. They would know this over time and apparently they used electrical cords just to cling on to the back of the boat and it would pull them along and in the dark of night that seems to be quite a reasonably plausible story and also there's other stories where somehow communicated with various gangsters from the outside world who engineered a, a passing boat that apparently was reported to be in the water and picked them up so if they did have outside help that brings me to another theory that I was considering where Maybe some of the guards were paid off. Like I said earlier, I think it was just a little bit too much accomplished without being noticed. And perhaps, maybe some guards or all of the guards were told to maybe turn a blind eye. Maybe they knew that something was going on, but, you know, just keep quiet and get on with your job. That's just my guesstimate. I'm thinking that may have happened, maybe. Absolutely intriguing story and a great Clint Eastwood movie based on that. Thank you for joining me once again. Like and subscribe of course. It was great speaking to you. All the best. Till next time. Take care.